what would happen if we actually got close to what God has in store for us? Mm. Like if we even imagine close to that, like <laughs> would we what? freak out? <laughs> like, whoa, mind blown. <laughs> All right, we're live, sis. This is this this is good. It's always nice catching up with you. But hi everyone. Happy Tuesday. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on when and where you're watching this Facebook Live. This is the voice and the face of Dr. Tolo Lavinto. I'm CEO and co-founder of Living Spring Family Medical Center in Mansfield, Texas, where we help our patients live long and well because we believe the quality of life is just as important as the quantity of life. If you're watching live, hashtag live, replay, hashtag replay. I am excited because I love this woman. Um, I'm glad to have her back. She's a friend. She's a classmate. She's just, she's a, she's a G. She's a gynecologist <laughs> too. Um, that, that, that works. She's a G. Yeah. She's a gynecologist. And today we'll be having a talk on the topic, doc, my test was positive for herpes helping. Dr. Taiwo, mm -hmm. how are you doing? And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for uh, having me on your platform. I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So for those who didn't watch the first time you were on, mm. um, can you kindly introduce yourself? Who are you and what do you do? Absolutely. Um, as you said, I'm Dr. Taiwo Drewade. I'm a gynecologist. I practice in the South Suburban area of Chicago. I am the CEO and founder of Dado uh, Medical Group. Right now we're Dado Gynecology. Um, where my passion and goal is to transform women's lives. So I make sure that women are thriving in every stage of life that they're in. That's my mission in life. I like your mission in life. I, I, I concur. Uh, this is good. But why, why do you do what you do? Mm, great question. Um, I, I find that I get fulfillment in fixing things. So if I can fix it medically, if I can fix it with aesthetics, if I can fix it with just listening to you and counseling you and giving you um, life advice from my own, you know, short span on this earth so far, I will give my all. Um, I love seeing the women that come to me just change, change mentally, change physically and change for the better. It's sort of fulfilling. It's more of a fulfillment for me to transform someone's life. So that's why I do what I do. And it fuels me. So when people come back and they say, what you said really helped me, what you did really changed my life, then I get pumped to do more. So it's awesome. more a self-fulfilling prophecy, I think. Yeah, gift that keeps giving. I love, it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So today we're talking herpes. Um, and I, I'll, I'll say we, we're going to focus on the herpes simplex because I know they're different types. Different types. Uh, so uh, for the sake of those who watch it, what how, what types of herpes simplex are there? There are two types. Herpes simplex one, herpes simplex two. Herpes simplex one is the one that's most common. People know as cold sores. So you get it on the side of your mouth or any area of your lips when you're stressed out. Some people actually get it inside their lip. So instead of on the side, they get it inside. I've actually seen cases of that. Um, and cold sores are very common. A lot of people have it, babies have it, children have it. Cold sores are very common. So that's herpes simplex one. It's not considered sexually transmitted unless it is found on the genitals. Um, and then there's herpes simplex two. The only way to get herpes simplex two is through genital transmission. So body fluid to body fluid sexually is how you can get herpes simplex two. So we call them herpes one and herpes two for short. Cold sore, genital herpes. Okay, can they, can they mix sometimes? Great question. So yes, herpes one can become genital herpes if herpes one is found on the genitals. Most times if people engage in oral sex and they have a cold sore or the beginnings of a cold sore, they can transmit that to their partner sexually. I have had cases of that where the patients come in with an outbreak. They think they're having a yeast infection. It's swollen. It's itchy. It's painful. They can't work. Uh, they can't walk. And then I swab it and it comes back positive for herpes one. And so my first question is, have you engaged in oral sex lately? Because that is the most common way to get herpes one on the genitals. All right. So I, I'm li I like that we're talking about this um, conundrum because the issue is that um, it, it the, the one can can be found on the gentle and the two can be found in the mouth. And so 
it gets a little murky, especially right. when we're talking about a sexually transmitted disease where a question of right. uh, faithfulness or someone going out of that, the, the, the intimate setting. And I've seen, I've seen this wrecked relationships because it's sometimes not well understood. Mm -hmm. um, but you mentioned something. You said usually you do a swap. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but before before we go, go, you know, let me just go there. The 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 swap, you do the swap. What if someone who comes and just says, um, "I want to get tested. I want to do an STD test, and I also want to get tested for STDs, um, for herpes." And you mm -hmm. ask them, "I don't have any um, symptoms, but they just want to get tested for herpes." How how do you address that when they don't have anything to swap? Great question. So this particular conversation becomes almost a 30 minute visit for people to understand. So um, we do a blood draw. So if someone is worried about being exposed to herpes or having uh, not sure, maybe they had some genital symptoms that went away and they, they want to make sure that it wasn't herpes. So there's no new lesion to swab. We do a blood draw to check for herpes antibody. So let's say someone wants to get tested for STDs. Now, the CDC does not re recommend testing for herpes as part of the STD panel, most probably because of this problem. Uh, we just They just say check for HIV, check for um, hepatitis C. If someone is at high risk, check for syphilis. But herpes is not recommended unless they're pregnant because we want to know that in case the baby might be exposed to it. But let's say someone wants to get checked for herpes. We do a blood draw for herpes antibody. And this herpes antibody comes back positive. Patients are always, um, it's hard to receive, number one, that kind of news. Mm -hmm. And then they start arguing about, so when, when was I exposed to it? How can it be positive? Um, I don't have any symptoms. So I tell them the antibody is just telling us that you've been exposed before. Unless I did a blood work a month ago and it was negative, and then I did blood work a month later and it's positive. That's the only time I can tell you the time frame that you were exposed. Mm -hmm. people, I was trying to figure out who it came from, right? And so it's, it's a difficult conversation to have. So I'm always telling them, this does not mean you actively have herpes right now. Because people get freaked out. Like, do I have to go tell my partner? Do I have to start medication? You know, who am I going to have this conversation with? So I tell them, the blood draw is not saying you currently have herpes. The blood mm -hmm. draw is saying you've been exposed to herpes in the past. Why do we care about that? Because in case you have an outbreak, in case you have tingling, burning, pain in one area, one spot in the genital area, we want you to know that it could be a possible herpes outbreak mm -hmm. so that you can get treated right away. Because I've had people come to me saying, I have a hair bump, it's not going away. I shaved two weeks ago, it's still there, it's bothering me. And then I look at it and I swab it and it's herpes. So they thought it was a hair bump. And mm -hmm. so if we don't treat that herpes lesion early, you could have that bump for up to two weeks. You could be transmitting that herpes virus, shedding that herpes virus for up to two weeks. The duration of, of disease is quite long. This is why we care. We want you to know so that when you start getting what we call prodromal symptoms, which is like a tingling, a burning, slight discomfort, we treat it with medication. It doesn't become a bump, a sore, an ulcer that takes two weeks to go away. Wow. So the yeah. blood test is you've been exposed in the past. Mm. The advantage of the blood test is if it's positive, you know your herpes um, virus, herpes, your body has seen herpes before. And so you call your doctor up and say, I think there's an outbreak going on. You get medication right away. It's mm. gone within five days and it doesn't take two weeks to go away. Mm -hmm. So that's the blood draw. If there is a physical bump, I've had patients actually come to me and saying that they have pain in the vulva. And then I do an exam and it, it looks like a slit or a cut or a laceration. And I'm thinking, oh, menopausal woman, loss of estrogen, the vulva is thin. Mm -hmm. But I always swab anyway. And I've had it come back positive for herpes. So it shows up in different, different, different forms. Different forms. But um, the best time is to treat it before it becomes a boil or mm -hmm. sore. So that would be the advantage of getting the blood draw. So if someone doesn't have symptoms, the blood draw helps them to prepare ahead of time to know what to expect, what to be on the lookout for. Okay. That was a lot of information. Yes, it is. Very, very useful information. The conundrum of herpes simplex type 2, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's best. Yeah. It, it's, each test has its benefits. Um, and I like that you mentioned that it's typically not recommended by CDC to do unless there's a 
um, specific symptom mm -hmm. symptomology that's suggested, and usually the swab is best. Now, yeah. is it curable? That's the next question. I have to ask all the time. Could, is, does it mean, does it, if I take this medicine, am I done? It's not going to come back? What, yeah, Doc, what do you say to that? <laughs> no, it is not curable. This is why I tell my patients all the time to use condoms. I'm like, there are diseases out there that are not curable. You live with them forever. So the herpes virus will hang out in the body. Um, but what your body does greatly is to suppress it. So your immune system will fight it off. Your immune system will create all these antibodies that will keep the herpes virus in check, keep it down so that you don't get outbreaks, which is why sometimes if you test it and they don't have symptoms and they've never been tested before, patients can get annoyed that I've never had symptoms. What do you mean? Right. This right. herpes test is positive. I've never, no one has ever said that. So that's probably why the CDC said to stop testing <laughs> because your body does a good job of mm -hmm. suppressing mm -hmm. the virus. Um, and so... All we can do is suppress the virus and then treat outbreaks. If someone gets super sick, when people were sick with COVID, lots of herpes outbreaks because their immune system was so uh, mm -hmm. under pressure, under a lot of stress. Um, if people are stressed out, so it might not even be a, an infection. They're just stressed out. They're, you know, they're working two jobs or emotionally stressed. Any type, any type of condition that suppresses your immune system or immunosuppressant drugs, people with autoimmune diseases taking immunosuppressant drugs, anything that makes your immune system less than optimal will cause an outbreak. So herpes is not curable. All we can do is optimize your immune system to keep it in check and treat any beginning symptoms so that it doesn't become a sore or a boil. Okay. All right. Awesome. Also, the next question is, for someone who's asking, how can I manage my symptoms and prevent outbreaks? So I get that question a lot too. Um, so optimizing your immune system, multivitamin, not smoking, um, protecting yourself, you know, using condoms all the time because um, anything that, that breaks up that, that barrier, um, what STDs do that is dangerous is that they break the barrier between the vagina that has bacteria and the sterile uterus ovaries. So the uterus and ovaries, they're in this nice environment, no bacteria, they're protected. STDs break that barrier between the vagina and the rest of the uterus and can allow bacteria to travel up into the uterus and cause other issues, um, uterus infection, fallopian tube infection, ovarian infection that requires surgery, that require weeks and weeks of um, antibiotics. I tell my patients, use condoms all the time. If you're in a monogamous relationship, a marriage relationship, that's a different conversation. Um, and so for those women, optimizing your immune system, multivitamins, no smoking, mm -hmm. get your vaccines, you know, that way, anything such as, you know, shingles, any of those pneumonia, any of those infections that can bring down your immune system, you want to guard against. So your immune system is um, optimal and keeps that virus in check. Awesome, awesome. And eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, all right, next question, Doc. How now so someone who's watching who's like, yes, I get it. I don't have they don't have outbreaks, but is there a way they can prevent the herpes from going to a partner? Great question. The only time you are shedding the virus is when you have an active infection. So when when you're feeling those beginning symptoms, the tingling, the burning or when you have an active sore, which is why herpes one can also become genital herpes. Remember herpes one is only cold source. Herpes two is only genital, but herpes one can become herpes two. Herpes two cannot become herpes one. Am I making sense? Yes, you are. Like, like, it, okay. you can, it can interplay as far as you wear right. the herpes fusion. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, and so, um, I apologize. I lost my train of thought. What was the question? Oh, we're talking about um, preventing transmitting a herpes to partner. Right. How to prevent transmission. If you have a cold sore, do not engage in oral sex because you will transmit that virus from your lips or mouth to your partner's genitals. So people need to be watchful of that because sometimes you're not even aware that you have a cold sore forming. So you have to be very, very conscious before you mm -hmm. engage in oral sex. Secondly is if you have an active infection in the genital area, you're feeling tingling, you're feeling burning, you, it might be a yeast infection, but you're not sure, then don't engage or use condoms.
because it could be a herpes infection and you shed the virus, immediately you start having symptoms and you can shed the virus for up to two weeks. So you want to make sure that if you start feeling the beginning symptoms, you get treated right away so you can stop shedding the virus and you can reduce the, the risk of transmitting it to your partner. And thirdly, use condoms. That's the best way to prevent it. Um, I like that you mentioned, so it's, it's a question of if there's an active sign of a flare. Correct. If you're not having symptoms, that's the time to abstain from Correct. having sex to minimize the risk of spreading. Correct. All right, awesome, awesome. Now, um, this has been very informative, and, and I'm sure people have more questions. They want to read, they want to do Google searches. I, I'm very cautious with um, Google searches because I know bad news sells, so I typically recommend a guided Google search. But are there resources or support groups or, or, or maybe websites that are validated that you would recommend for people to go and find more information about herpes? Yeah, I would recommend um, WebMD. WebMD is trusted I, for information. I would recommend also um, um, educational materials from your doctor. Your doctor actually has educational materials about these diseases. And you can trust that information because it's vetted, it's peer reviewed, um, it's accurate, and it's not somebody's opinion on Google. Um, so I always always give my patients information about herpes virus itself. Um, the doctor has resources that they can print and any information from WebMD, I would trust. All right, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been very, very informative, straight to the point. I like how you're like, <laughs> <laughs> So for someone who's watching, you know, um, you know, and, and, and maybe has a diagnosis of herpes, there, there's hope. Um, you can still have a good quality and quantity of life. I see patients all the time who have no flares because they manage themselves well. Of course, they're very cautious with who they expose themselves to. But you can live a good quality of life, um, um, you know, managing the, the, the symptom or the disease process itself by doing a lot of things that Dr. Taiwo has talked about today. Now, that being said, um, doc, so people are wondering, man, I, I like this doctor. I want to come connect with her. I want to have come speak on my platform. Or they would like to work with you as a client. Doc, where can people find you? Absolutely. I am, um, the name of my practice is D-A-R-D-U-R. -R. So Dadur Medical Group or Dadur Gynecology. I'm in the South Suburban area of Chicago. My website is dadurmedical.com. I'm on Facebook, Dad Gynecology. I'm on Instagram, Dad Medical Group. I'm on YouTube, Dad Gynecology. I'm on TikTok, I think. TikTok, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dad yeah. Gynecology. So I'm on all social media. I'm on LinkedIn, Dad Medical Group. So I'm on all social media platforms. Um, I wanted to add that if a patient is getting multiple outbreaks a year, so mm. more than three, let's say, they're stressed out, they get an outbreak. They have the flu, they get an outbreak. You know, just things are happening and they get more than uh, three outbreaks a year. Then we put them on a daily medication to suppress the virus altogether. That way we don't just rely on their immune system. We put them on once a day, one pill, one time pill that they take every day to keep the virus in check. And those patients have less outbreaks than people who are not suppressed at all. So I wanted to remember to add that. That's very, very important. And that's very um, useful too in preventing um exposure or transmitting it to someone yeah. else. You know, I have patients who say, I haven't, I've only had one outbreak, but I want to be on something to never give us. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's an option. So thank you for highlighting that. Yeah. And I put all your information in all the well, www's, your Facebook here. And I see also you too, mm -hmm. uh, and your website as well. So people can connect with you, but thank you so much for taking your time this Absolutely. Tuesday evening out of your busy schedule to spend time with us, Doc. Absolutely. I hope that this has helped someone. It's a lot of info. Um, like I said, it turns to like long conversations because people are yes. confused, trying to figure out how it mm -hmm. happened. Uh, but the good news is your immune system is strong. Your immune system will keep it in check. Um, you have the added advantage of a daily medication to help your immune system to keep it in check. And just because the blood draw is positive does not mean you have an active infection. So you don't have to freak out and have to tell your partner mm -hmm. or things like that. You just have to be conscious, aware, so that you know if an outbreak is happening and you attack it right away. Awesome. That's a very good way to summarize this. So there's don't, don't freak out. That's key. Um, awesome. And if you need to replay this video, you can do that. And please, for those who are watching, thank you for joining live. Um, you can always tag people or forward this information to them, um, especially those who you know will find this very useful. Thanks again, Doc. I appreciate you. Thank you.
<laughs> oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. All right, thank you all for watching. As always, if you or anyone you know is looking for an awesome HR and a passionate family physician in the Mansfield, Texas area who will have conversations to help you live long and well, I am she. Have a good one, everyone. Sharing is caring. Please share. Just tag them forward. Do, it, do the things. <laughs> thank you so much, Doc. Thank this you. This was good. This was good. good. Let me, let